so we got the multiple choice questions here uh, and let me so again <laughs> i'm doing this demo as your instructor i'm going to be cheating as a test student and uh, let's see how well uh, the chat gpt does on these questions and then we'll come back and uh, and uh, uh, give correct answers to whatever ChatGPT missed. So, um, yeah, and I think from having tried this before, I know that 10 minutes is plenty of time to copy and paste and do all that. Um, so I'll definitely have to um, plan next semester's material with the understanding that, you know, this 10 minute time limit, it's really an anti check measure. Um, so I might actually give people more time because if a uh, time limit wouldn't matter anyway, then I might give people 15, 20 minutes because it this uh, tight amount of time does uh, negatively impact the people who are working through this honestly. And um, if uh, like to make it impossible to cheat through a chat GPT, I would have to make it five minutes. And th that's the point where um, I'm <laughs> fighting a losing battle. So. Anyways, so let me start and I'll first answer it using ChatGPT again. This is cheating. Please don't do it. I'm doing this as a demo, you know, kind of. Um, and so I, I don't even know what I'm demonstrating other than that. I am watching what ChatGPT does. So this, uh, whatever I do to, oh, uh, it's correct. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, kind of things that you need to replace, edit. Uh, again, I'm not, this isn't done as a demonstration or recommendation. You shouldn't be doing what I'm doing unless you've already taken it and you are using ChatGPT to get, I don't know, some kind of explanation. Then I can imagine uh, that use of ChatGPT being consistent with academic honesty. Um, so I would have to do my own calculation to tell. Um, ChatGPT tends to miscalculation questions more, but not always. Sometimes it gets it right. So it wouldn't surprise me if it got that uh, uh, question too right. Oops, what am I doing? Just need to submit it. A, B, C, D. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that with this uh, ChatGPT will do fairly well, mainly because I think um, there aren't that many calculation questions that I can ask uh, in this particular application of uh, mechanics uh, in multiple choice format. Uh, with the free form, there's more um, quantitative questions I can ask about. Uh, I'm just going to type those in. This, uh, so V stands for wave speed, F stands for frequency, lambda stands for wavelength, and T stands for wave. So lambda is equal to V divided by T, lambda is equal to V times T, C lambda is equal to, oops, uh, frequency is uh, V times lambda, and I'm deliberately not putting in any additional symbols. Uh, v is equal to F divided by lambda. But I think uh, ChatGPT understands implicit multiplication fine to the extent that it in understands any math because it's a large language model and it's not actually understanding math. It's a, uh, it's a doing what language models do. <laughs> I wonder, I probably won't miss that. Um, oh, I wasn't really thinking through, so I'll have to come back. Um, if there's a time after um, copying everything, I might just go back through and try to determine which ones I think is right and which ones uh, I think is not right.
by the way, at the altitude, the speed of sound does change with the changing uh, pressure and temperature of air. But I don't think it, the change is all that dramatic. Um, Uh, yeah, here I'm going to type it again. Pressure due to bit of fluid. So this is rho H3 capital V P over percentage G plus over R. Okay, so P is equal to rho V. P is equal to MV, P is equal to rho GH, P is equal to one half rho B squared. Oh, that sounds right. I'll have to read it through it more carefully. Oh, I'm just uh, focusing on copying and paste. I'm focusing on cheating, that's why. <laughs> Not even actually thinking through the questions. So yeah, there is. I guess uh, I think this is the one Bernoulli's principle question that I put in. So you might get that, but um, uh, not really any more than that. So how much time do I have? I have okay four and a half minutes. I think that might be enough to kind of work it through. Um, so yeah, second is SI unit of time. So I assume the rest are incorrect. So it got one right. Um, second fourth of the eight times over to the nine second. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that 1.1, that a little above one. So that sounds right too. Um, yeah, four times that, yeah, got that right. Um, Wavelength is, no, it's not. So it missed this. Wavelength is like a period of an oscillator. So, okay, it missed one. Um, three is equal to F. That's wrong. Um, lambda is equal, uh, lambda is equal to three times T. So, yeah, missed the two. Well, so 12 hours speed of that, I probably got that right, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so got four right. Seven, not one, not five, um, yeah, I think I got the right, so five. Um, second letter, yeah, got the right, six. Did they miss two qualitative questions? Oh. Yeah, and this was the correct formula. So seven. Wow, it's gonna get eighty percent right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so if I'm correct about all the questions it got right and wrong, then it should be eighty percent. Let's uh, submit and see. Um, so. Once that it got correct, I think, you know, the explanation it's giving is probably right. Um, so for the ones they missed, uh, let me give the correct explanation with uh, enough amount of time. I think we are starting from here. Yeah, uh, defines the term or, yeah. So yeah, C second is SI unit of time and they, uh, PT gives you the explanation for the other ones. B, A, B, D, L, O, 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 yeah. So he got this one right uh, through the doing. Now, it, you actually didn't need this. Um, all you needed were these two numbers to do the calculation. So eight divided by nine frequency, or you can calculate period directly, nine divided by eight. And that's the calculation I did in my head to realize the correct answer will be slightly bigger than one. And of those, there's only one choice there. Yeah. So I did it more quickly than ChatGPT. <laughs> um, 
So to measure the rate of heartbeat, yeah, I think I did it right. So yeah, 60 seconds in one minute. So um, with the 15 seconds, yeah, multiply by four. That's the exact same way I did it. And uh, here, so it missed it. Um, I didn't even give it an explanation. So uh, it, uh, I think uh, the pictorial illustration is the best way to kind of see uh, why wavelength is like a period. So if you took a snapshot of a wave, so, uh, like a wave on a string, you took a picture at a moment in time, then a traveling periodic wave would look something like this. And so here I'm plotting some sort of amplitude as a function of position and what we call wavelength. One way to measure it would be from peak to peak. So this would be one uh, wavelength. And there's a great deal of analogy between this and what you do see with the oscillators. Imagine you are plotting uh, position of oscillator as a function of time. So it's going to look sinusoidal. Uh, maybe, you know, it might have a cosine form if you start out with a maximum amplitude or something like this. And when you're trying to determine the period of this thing, you go from peak to peak. So peak to peak, that would be the period. So the way you illustrate a wavelength and period graphically or mathematically through mathematical expressions, they are quite similar. So uh, wavelength is a uh, overweight, is like a period of an oscillator is the most uh, appropriate comparison. It's not like the frequency. Um, the, the, the one that corresponds to frequency would be so when you're dealing with the oscillation, there's this quantity uh, that you have seen, the angular frequency. And um, in a wave, there's a quantity we define as wave number. That's uh, 2 pi divided by wavelength. And this wave number, it's really comparable to this frequency. In fact, uh, when you write a frequent, the angular frequency in terms of frequency, that's 2 pi times f. So f is a reciprocal of period. So angular frequency is 2 pi divided by a period. And comparing this, you see all the comparisons left. So, all right, so ChatGPT got that wrong. Uh, let's continue, five. I don't know, I, yeah, it's just, uh, um, so it must be outside of its uh, training text or whatever, because uh, it's just giving, giving random guesses. Um, here, what I would say is the way I check these expressions is through dimensional analysis. So wavelength, I know it is length, um, unit of length, meter. Uh, wave speed, it has unit of meters per second. And time has unit of second, so it's uh, one over second. So here I can see that these units don't combine to give you the unit on the left-hand side. That's how I knew first the choice was right. And the second choice will give you the right unit because seconds will cancel. Now, third choice, when you look at it, the left-hand side is one over second, or hertz. Right-hand side is meters per second, times meter. This doesn't result in the same uh, dimensions as this. And same deal with this. You know, when you have meters per second equal to one over second times reciprocal, so that would be second per meter. The units here don't match. So. I, I guess um, if you ask a chat GPT dimensional analysis specific question, it, it's probably able to do it. I don't know if we can think through a dimensional analysis argument for the answers it comes up with. That's the kind of thing that, you know, human beings, students with some training and reminder will do. I don't know if large language models can do something like that because they don't actually know anything. Um, so question six, I think it, Got it right, yeah. Uh, and the hours cancel also, yeah. And it did this calculation correctly, Mach 5, so 5 times that, and they chose the closest to. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what I would say is, oh, at the height, the speed of sound is actually different. That's why um, 
this is actually the more correct answer than 1715. This, this is the speed of sound at standard conditions on the, uh, at the sea level. So question eight, think it did it right in one second. Yeah, that far away and that's the closest. Uh, due to weight of fluid. Uh, yeah, that's not really an explanation, but it's the kind of expression that you should uh, memorize or know where to look it up. So. Um, yeah, I wish it gave an explanation, but I think I've talked about enough how Bernoulli's principle comes from conservation of energy principle. So, all right, back to all the questions. I think I have enough time to do just uh, this uh, one more time without ChatGPT, um, since uh, I don't think a ChatGPT, haven't seen ChatGPT get 100% yet. I mean, I can believe that next semester's version might. <laughs> uh, so uh, I gotta, I, I really need to standardize that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, so this semester, it to uh, almost uh, stay as uh, optional, um, but uh, next semester, I think what it'll be is it's basically everyone I need to talk that way at least once uh, unless I specifically waive it for you because uh, what I'm learning this semester is that uh, for a handful of people I can say that just based on my interaction in lab but there's a good deal of number of students who might have a better understanding of physics than what I'm able to see just um, observing in the group work setting so let me do this one more time and get 100 percent hopefully uh, I guess I'll go at normal speed. I don't have to speed it through it. I got 10 minutes. Um, so it says, suppose the crankshaft of a car engine spins at that. What is the frequency of rotation? Uh, let me do one thing that uh, is kind of using outside the tool, but it won't be considered cheating. You are allowed to use O from alpha because it's just a calculator. So you can say 3,500 RPM in hurt and it'll do the conversion and that i think is right on the border of what i'm okay with the people just uh, using uh, oh. <laughs> so you do have to know how to use it so it doesn't think it's compatible so you have to tell it okay cycles per second um yeah because it's it's just a dumb calculator. It's aware of units, but that's all it's aware. Um, so fifteen point three three hertz. Um, okay, question two: uh, Choose the method which may be used to measure the period of a simple harmonic oscillator consisting of a mass hanging from spring. Okay, I think it's uh, trying to get me to recognize a cycle. That's the lowest the position. And that's a half of a cycle, so not it. That's the equilibrium position. Uh, when it's returned to equilibrium position, the first time it's only going to be half a cycle. Does it say from equilibrium, it's just starting up, it will come down, pass it, and then when it comes back up, the second time, that's a full period. So count the number of oscillations in one minute, calculate 60 seconds divided by, that would be period, yeah. Um, yeah, so that should be right for period. Um, yeah, good. Um, and this is just gives you RPM, basically. Just <laughs> um, so the correct statement below regarding amplitude, frequency, and, a, and period of a simple harmonic. Yeah, by the way, these questions should be dynamically generated. As in, if you see this exact statement of question, the correct choice on in this version might not be correct choice for your version. Uh, I'm really proud of how these questions are programmed. Uh, the larger amplitude oscillates at a higher frequency. You know, that's the kind of the defining property of simple harmonic oscillator that frequency doesn't depend on amplitude. Um, yeah, so both of these are not right. The, that's also not right. Yeah, given it's a like property of the simple harmonic oscillator. This might not be dynamically generated. I don't think this is actually. So if you see this exact question, this is probably the correct answer. Uh, well, wave speed uh, equation, this, yeah, one of the most useful equations. 
how changing one quantity affects other quantity. Yeah. The one big thing I tell you is that the wave speed is the property of the medium. So don't look at this equation and think that if you change wavelength, that somehow changes the wave speed. Most circumstances, wave speed remains the same. And it's the frequency that changes as you change wavelength. So in the sound wave, if the wave speed decreases, the, so in the most common scenarios, uh, it's the frequency of oscillation that remains constant. So this is incorrect. In a standing wave, if the wave speed decreases, then um, depends on standing wave. But especially for the example of waves on a guitar string, wavelength actually doesn't change because that depends on the physical arrangement with the guitar. So it's the frequency that will change. <laughs> Yeah, I think we just have to know all the different examples. In water waves, if the wave frequency increases, then the, um, yeah, so this portion will make me suspicious. And I think even if the wave speed were constant, wavelength shouldn't be increasing, it should be decreasing uh, to be consistent with that. Oh, so the last one. Wave speed increases, yeah, frequency remains the same. So wavelength has to increase to, uh, make this equation hold. So it's that. Okay, I gotta go faster. It's system on below compares wavelength to another. Yeah. Oh, I had this question before. I already explained it. It's like a period of an oscillator. Um, defines it describes wavelength. Um, nope. Nope. This is one of those technical sounding choices that's totally incorrect. Um, no. Yeah, smallest portion of wave that repeats. That's how wavelength is defined, in fact. Uh, even for things that are not sinusoidal. Yeah. Below is a picture of a guitar. Yeah, these are frets. A string is the second. Uh, when plucked, it produces that. What happens? Uh, 12th fret, you can kind of see from this picture that's about halfway in between. So you are reducing the wavelength to half wave speed should remain the same so the frequency will double um yeah higher frequency yeah yeah human hearing is sensitive to a small range yeah 20 oh <laughs> so this is the correct this is the correct choice uh, i think you should be able to look it up from the textbook if you don't have it memorized uh, normal speaking voice i think that depending on the person is around 500 hertz i think maybe that's on the high end um, like 20 would be a bit barely audible sound, like rumbling of a, a machinery would might be at 20 hertz. Um, so, yeah, the rest are slightly off. Um, I think a 10,000 kilohertz, 10,000 hertz might be upper limit of hearing for some people, like older folks. But this 100, that's definitely off. Uh, I think most people can hear down to 50, 60, 70 hertz. So, um, just the correct formula for the pressure. Uh, yeah, I think I saw this question before. It was this um, for the reasons that were explained before. Uh, you can also look it up in the textbook. Then um, the water is common. Yeah. So in this chemistry unit, it's a one because that's how grammar's defined, and converting that to meters and kilograms, the physics unit. This should be a thousand, and I went through why in lecture. So, yeah, okay. I think I answered all the questions. Um, hopefully, hundred percent. Let's see if I didn't get hundred uh, percent. Aside from me being embarrassing, let um, yeah, all right, it's hundred percent. If it hadn't been, I would have gone into the review work and make sure. Um, I take more time to figure out which ones I missed. But I think this set is relatively on the easier side, especially compared to what you've seen with the kinematics and forces. Um, I, I think I told you at the beginning of the semester that this is uh, the most difficult physics class, even more so than physics 4B and 4C, because the kind of things you learn in uh, when we do introduce mechanics, there's a lot of um, reshaping of the intuition that needs to happen and it's a uh, it's a lot of work <laughs>